Yeah, so it's my great pleasure to introduce somebody who already appeared uh, <laughs> a few seconds be be before. It's Professor Naohisa Yahagi from the Keio University in Tokyo, uh, Japan, and he's going to update us on how to use novel technology for improving colonic ESD. <laughs> Professor Yahagi, the Thank floor you. is yours. Yeah. Thank you very much, Michael, for your kind introduction. And it's always a great pleasure to attend this wonderful meeting. Uh, could you start my video, please? Thank you very much for inviting me to this wonderful Olympus Symposium during End Swiss meeting. It is always my great pleasure to attend this meeting. Today, I'd like to talk about Olympus latest te technology, uh, which can improve our chronic ESD procedure. I don't have any COI related to this presentation. Well, Olympus new system has great feature, uh, which is beneficial not only for diagnostic endoscopy, but also for therapeutic endoscopy. I would like to explain a little bit about the new technology. Uh, BIMAC is a new technology of Olympus, uh, which we can uh, improve the brightness uh, this BIMAC can uh, enhance the darker part of the image without having halation. That means we can get homogeneous bright image throughout the procedure. For example, usually far side from the lens looks dark, even though the near side looks very bright. But using BIMAC system, we can get a uh, homogeneous uh, bright image uh, for the entire endoscope image. That is really wonderful uh, for uh, both therapeutic and diagnostic uh, procedure. And TXI is also a new technology which can enhance texture, color tone, and brightness. We can uh, enhance the target lesion um, much effectively using this technology. Uh, by using TXI one mode, we can uh, use uh, three of them. Uh, as a result, we can easily recognize the surface structure and border of the target lesion, even though the color of the target lesion becomes unnatural. If you prefer to have natural color, you can use TXI2 uh, because it doesn't increase the uh, color tone. Well, I would like to show you actual image of TXI. This is a white right image. As you can see here on the left side, the, there is a very large uh, laterally spreading tumor with uh, a non-granular type. By using TXI1 mode, we can easily recognize the border of the target lesion and easily recognize the surface structure using TXI1. And if you prefer to have more natural color, we can use TXI2, uh, which is very similar to the white light, but still we can easily recognize the border and the surface structure because of the enhancement of texture and brightness. This is uh, also very helpful for the screening colonoscopy procedure, I guess. Therefore, I would like to show you one video clip for screening colonoscopy. Can you detect any lesion with this white right image? Well, uh, probably you already recognized here uh, there is a flat lesion. By using TXI1 mode, we can recognize that lesion more easily. At 5 o'clock side, you can easily recognize very flat lesion. Uh, this kind of flat lesion can be easily missed uh, by using white right, but uh, we can nicely visualize uh, by using TXI1 mode. And Olympus recently launched a new full zoom endoscope. And regarding the CFXZ1200, uh, it can uh, magnify 135 times, uh, which can give us a very clean and bright uh, sharp image. And uh, there are a lot of new technology uh, to realize this uh, wonderful image. One of the new technology is high FPS mode of uh, CV1500. Usually, normal scan, uh, sequential scanning uh, using the frame, uh, frame rate mode is 60 frame, frames per second. But in high 
FPS mode, we usually use 120 frames per second. Uh, as a result, we can get very sharp and less flickering uh, endoscopic image uh, on the monitor. This is really wonderful technology. You can uh, see the difference between the new technology and the previous technology. On the left side, uh, there is less flickering uh, image. It is uh, quite uh, impressive for us. Well, I would like to show you, show you one of the example of coronic polyp. Uh, this looks like a small benign lesion, but taken biopsy at the previous institution already revealed well-differentiated adenocarcinoma. In this situation, we carefully check the target lesion using NBI and magnification before conducting a therapeutic procedure. I would like to show you actual uh, procedure of NBI and magnification. The most important technical tip for NBI magnification using Cruzum uh, endoscope is to avoid uh, too much movement of our wrist. Gently come close to the target lesion and slightly control both up, down, and right, left channel to, together with zoom lever. We can easily get uh, high quality of image of the target lesion. Now we can see a beautiful vascular network here, uh, which is classified as JNET type 2B. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, there is some virus component at the lower part. Of course, the virus tumor has relatively higher uh, malignant potential. Uh, we should remove this in an unblocked fashion. But at least at the upper part of this region, uh, it has uh, well arranged surface structure and a nice vascular network, which uh, suggests benign lesion. Well, uh, even though uh, it looks like easy target, uh, but we already found that there is a deformity at the upper side of the polyp and looks a little bit rigid. And taken biopsy already revealed well differentiated adenocarcinoma. Therefore, we decided to perform ESD to remove entire lesion in an unblocked fashion. For the therapeutic procedure, uh, we usually use uh, previous therapeutic endoscope, which is a PCF H290T. Uh, this doesn't have magnification, but we can use RDI. RDI is a very uh, unique uh, narrowed band imaging, which we can visualize uh, sick blood vessel within the submucosal layer. And at the same time, uh, we can easily detect the uh, breeding point using RDI. And we did uh, some experiment using eye tracking system, and we measured the distance of eye movement during ESD procedure using eye tracking system, and found that the distance of eye movement is much less in RDI group than white right group. And of course, we can reduce the uh, uh, procedure time for hemostasis uh, by using RDI. As I mentioned, RDI mode one is very helpful uh, for recognizing breeding point. But of course, uh, we had better to avoid breeding situation when we conduct ESD. For this purpose, RDI mode two is very useful to avoid vessel injury during submucosal puncturing when we give uh, submucosal injection at the beginning of, of ESD procedure. I would like to show you actual uh, ESD procedure. I usually spray indigocarmine in order to check the direction of the gravity. Now spray the indigocarmine goes to 12 o'clock side. That means 6 o'clock side is the upper part of the gravity. And RDI is very useful to visualize the sick blood vessel within the submucosal layer. By recognizing this kind of sick blood vessel, I can inject submucosal solution uh, without injuring the sick blood vessel. 
This is another thick blood vessel. By recognizing that this kind of thick blood vessel, I can safely inject submucosal fluid cushion uh, throughout the ESD procedure. Then start the mucosal incision using 1.5 mm dual knife J. Gently touch to the target mucosa and cutting the mucosa using dry cut mode. This is the back side of the protrusion. I initially make a mucosal incision at the oral side first in order to make it sure the end point of the submucosal dissection. Injection. And if it is necessary, I can give additional submucosal fluid cushion through the knife at any time. Unfortunately, there was a bleeding uh, during the mucosal incision. Uh, therefore, we should uh, stop it uh, before continuing the procedure. By using RDI, we can easily visualize the breathing point, then hemostasis becomes much easier and less stressful. Now, the bleeding already stopped, washing the uh, area, then continue the submucosal dissection. Carefully catch the edge of the uh, mucosal incision from the upper side. I'm continuing the mucosal incision to the lower side. As far as the white ceramic tip is staying on the surface, it is quite safe to do mucosal incision. This is the end of the circumferential mucosal incision. Right after circumferential mucosal incision, I gave additional fluid cushion through the knife. The target tissue was nicely lifted up, then quickly start the submucosal dissection using swift quark. Just tracing inner edge of the incised area, I can easily open the submucosal space. Then slowly going to the upper side and connect the incision line to the left side. After dissecting middle of the submucosal layer, I could easily open the submucosal space. Now we can see the submucosal layer nicely and there was rich vascular network within the submucosal layer. Therefore, I dissected submucosal tissue very carefully using swift quark. Of course, we should dissect the tissue very carefully, relatively slowly, in order to avoid severe bleeding. If we go slowly using swift quark, it usually doesn't bleed so much. Now it becomes nearly the end of the procedure. We can see the remaining uh, submucosal tissue nicely in this situation and carefully coat the remaining tissue with the tip of the dual knife and finish the ESD. Now you can see the beautiful resection bed. Of course, there was no muscle injury and there was no severe bleeding at all. The resection bed is completely clean. This is a resected specimen. The resected specimen size was nearly 5 cm by 4 cm. And as I mentioned, uh, this region was already uh, proved as cancerous region because taken biopsy already re revealed a well differentiated adenocarcinoma. And by using NBI, we can check the surface structure and the vascular pattern again. I'm now switching NBI and using a zoom function. This is relatively well arranged surface, surface structure, which is classified as JNET type 2A, uh, suggesting benign adenoma. But if we look at this area, the surface structure becomes a little bit irregular, and also vascular network becomes quite irregular. Uh, therefore, this is classified as type JNET 2B, uh, suggesting um, causal cancer. And going to further left side, I found the amorphous area here. Surface structure already disappeared here, and we cannot see the vascular network. Uh, this means uh, there is some 
uh, deep submucosal invasion, I guess. Of course, we have to wait a histopathological evaluation, but this surface structure suggests submucosal invasion. At least this was margin-free resection. Therefore, we should wait for final histopathological evaluation to tell uh, this uh, EST was curative or not. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Well, this is my conclusions, ladies and gentlemen. New Olympa system provides very bright images throughout the procedure. And TXI seems very useful, especially for screening colonoscopy, we can find very flat lesion. Uh, new zoom endoscope provides upper, uh, super high quality of images of target regions, which is very useful for characterization of the target region before ESD procedure. RDI is very useful uh, to visualize sick blood vessels in the submucosal layer and identify bleeding points during ESD procedure. And I believe that overall uh, Olympus new technology can help a lot, not only for diagnostic procedure, but also for uh, therapeutic procedures. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Professor Yahagi. It seemed, I mean, it, it, it was brilliant lecture. And, but when I looked at your hand outside of the, of the body, uh, it seems that the new system may even reduce the amount of trembling, shaking, because the, 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 the view was so stable. So amazing, amazing, um, amazing view. So I have a question yeah, for you. <laughs> Uh, so I have a question for you. The, sometimes when we assess a bigger lesions in the in the colon, it's difficult to, to 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 assess the entire lesion. So do you think that this extended depth of field may facilitate the recognition of of tiny spot of uh, otherwise covered cancer? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, before starting actual inspection, uh, there is another important uh, point uh, when we conduct uh, characterization of the target lesion. We should wash the lumen again and again uh, until the uh, target lesion that becomes completely clean. Otherwise, we cannot uh, recognize the irregular surface pattern or irregular vascular pattern. Uh, therefore, we should uh, carefully wash the target lesion uh, beforehand. Then. Uh, uh, come close to the target lesion a little bit uh, from the distant part. If you uh, start the inspection uh, starting from the very close to the target, uh, you cannot see uh, everything. But if you uh, examine the target lesion uh, from the distant part and carefully uh, check the most suspicious area uh, before approaching there, uh, you can really focus on the most important part. That, that is the most important technical tip. And the bright image can help us to uh, find that such a suspicious region uh, when we conduct uh, diagnostic endoscopy. And uh, for the uh, magnification, uh, we should minimize our movement when we conduct zoom uh, magnification. Uh, because uh, if we uh, magnify target lesion violently, uh, we cannot get a clear image. And as Stefan and uh, other experts already mentioned, uh, transparent food is always helpful to have a stable, uh, good image. Uh, but uh, for the purpose of uh, using magnif uh, uh, magnification, uh, we should use short-sized uh, cap, uh, which has only two millimeter rest. Overall, uh, those kind of tiny technical tip is very important for the characterization of the target lesion. Thank you, thank you so much. So the other question from from myself is that. When we are doing a therapeutic procedures like ESD and uh, it takes a little bit longer or there is some fatty tissue in there, the, the field of view becomes a little bit smoky and obscure and it's uh, difficult to see. Do you, do you think that this novel, uh, novel scope, which are brighter, may help us to see better through these smoky areas? Uh, thank you very much. It is really an uh, important question. Uh, for the smokes, uh, uh, we should uh, uh, 
uh, suck the smokes and also wash the lumen again and again until it completely uh, clean. Uh, but for the fat tissue, it is sometimes really uh, troublesome because uh, the lens becomes dirty and it is very difficult to wash it uh, until it becomes completely clean. But RDI is really helpful uh, to solve that uh, uh, problem uh, because uh, red light can penetrate uh, to the deeper uh, the tissue. Uh, then we can get relatively nice, e clear image even with the fat tissue. Uh, therefore, in case of finding fat tissue within the submucosa area, as I sometimes use RDI even for the submucosa dissection. Uh, that, that is really helpful. So the first three, we should uh, suck the smoke and we should wash the lumen, then we should try RDI. Uh, those three uh, technical tips are really helpful uh, for difficult situations. Thank you so much. Stefan, I think that you have a question. For sure. Now, Isa, it's always stunning how you first uh, accurately and precisely um, assess the lesion and then uh, how you proceed with the ESD. Beside all the filters, I have a question also for the future. What is the optimal position of the working channel for ESD? I think six, six o'clock is the ideal location uh, to do ESD because I can uh, go uh, to left or right as I want. Uh, but uh, currently, uh, we have 5 o'clock working channel for the coronoscope and 8 o'clock uh, working channel for the gastroscope. So the, it is a little bit uh, mm, sometimes dangerous when we conduct some goes out di dissection. Uh, therefore, I really want to have 5 o'clock, uh, no, no, 6 o'clock working channel. Thank you so much, uh, now Professor Yahagi, for sharing your experience. And I will right now pass over to, to Stefan. Thank you for joining uh, this session.